so hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and staying safe. Welcome to our webinar called The Keys to Success in, in the Oil and Gas Industry. I am Anurani Smailova, a third year petroleum engineering student in French Azerbaijan University and the representative of SEG Asoy student chapter from Azerbaijan. And also we have uh, our second representative, Jamila Aliyeva, uh, and we will be your moderators for today's session. As I said, uh, the session will be mainly about Pico's uh, advices and his path to oil and gas industry. It will be done by a very distinctive and proficient speaker, Dr. Ah Ahmed al Garhim, who has obtained his bachelor's degree in mining engineering from Cairo University in uh, 2003, and uh, he also holds a PhD degree from Texas State University. Uh, since 2004, uh, he has been involved in industry with holding different positions in all the spheres of petroleum industry, specialized in uh, many fields, including geomechanics, uh, well bore stability, well site geology, and logging, mud logging, and many more. Currently, Dr. Ahmed is a professor at Marietta College and director of Pio Petrum. So let's welcome our speaker. So Mr. Ahmed, we are really grateful to you for accepting our invitation and giving us uh, such an opportunity uh, for conducting this useful webinar. So everyone, please finally don't hesitate to drop your questions to the chat or to the question and answer section. Uh, we will try to answer all of them at the end of the session. Thank you for listening and uh, Dr. Ahmed, microphone is yours. Nurana, thank you very much for the amazing um, uh, introduction. Also, um, uh, thank you, Jamila, both of you for, you know, uh, um, thank you for both of you for uh, this invitation. Also, I would like to thank, uh, you know, uh, so the Society of Exploration and uh, Geophysics um, uh, at ASOIU University, the student chapter. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you today. You know, um, um, as I just mentioned, this is maybe the first time to uh, give a talk not about something technical, but just um, giving some advices for the students. I'm very happy to do this today with you. So um, it is not a technical talk. It is just um, a friendly advice. You can consider me like an elder brother. And today I will do my best to give you a good advice. Okay, so uh, I'm planning today to talk about uh, multiple things. First, I would like to talk about uh, some lessons learned from my life because I did a lot of mistakes in my life. And the reason why I want to talk about these mistakes, because I want you to avoid doing the same mistakes. So um, um, uh, most of you, you know, maybe you are in early 20s or maybe late, you know, like um, uh, between 18 and maybe 22 years old. So uh, maybe you, you don't have enough uh, experience in life. So I will do my best to give you uh, some of these experience. 20 years ago, I was sitting in the same place uh, you are sitting now. So I will talk about my education, my work experience, uh, how to study in the United States, how to work in the United States. And at the end, I will uh, give you like a, a short list of uh, advices. And finally, I will be happy to answer all your questions. So let's begin. Okay, so long time ago, maybe 20 years ago, I was doing my high school in Egypt, in a little uh, government in Egypt called Fayoum. And my dream was to study information technology. So nothing related to oil and gas. My dream at the time is to be a computer science engineer or like an IT professional. And uh, my dad uh, did not like that, and we used to get a lot of debate uh, all the time because he wanted to, uh, to see me, you know, as a physician um, uh, or maybe um, a civil engineer, but he, he don't like information technology at all. So at the time, you know, um, I failed to adopt my plan because later, when I finished my high school, I went to um, a faculty of engineering. And uh, maybe uh, you don't know that in Egypt, faculty of engineering is five years. And the first year, we call it preparatory uh, year. 
So you get like a general topics and after you finish your first year, then you decide uh, your major. Maybe you will become a petroleum engineer or civil engineer or computer engineer or whatever. So I went to a university called Helwan University. It is not Cairo University. And uh, after I finished, I was very good student. I get like 80%, which is, uh, you know, we, we, we did not use the GPA scale uh, at the time. So I get like 80% and this was a very good grade. So I applied to transfer to Cairo University to go for computer engineering. When I went to Cairo University, they told me that we, they will not accept any applicant from outside Cairo University. If I wanna join faculty of engineering, I should go maybe for mining, maybe for petroleum, maybe for civil, maybe for anything else except computer science. At the time I was uh, you know, very young, I want to fight for my dream. So I decided I will not focus with my education and I will go and work. I will try to work for um, uh, a computer uh, or IT company. And I was expecting this is uh, uh, right. But now I'm advising all of you, don't do that. You know, this is, was a, a big mistake because I, I failed to adopt my plan. Maybe um, uh, it is not, good for me to become a computer engineer. Maybe I should be something else and you need to modify your plans uh, all over the time. And I was fighting uh, in a wrong place. This is not the right place to fight, uh, you know, for dream that you, you will leave your school and for sure you will fail and you maybe you will not complete your education just because you want to work for an IT company. This is really a bad idea. So as a result, uh, I went to uh, mining engineering and because I left the school for work, I get overall 63% overall grade. This is very bad grade. This is like, a, we call it fair. And you know, higher than fair should be good, then very good, then excellent. So this is the lowest acceptable level. So this is a big failure you know, I started with. So after that, I get uh, something good happen in my life that I get hired by a company, IT company. In 2003, I get graduated. I get my dreams that I'm now I'm working for IT company, but I noticed there is no future for me to grow inside this company. If I can imagine myself after five years from starting working at that company, I will see myself at the same place. And this is not uh, a good place to stay. So this is, a, it was bad work environment. So I decided to quit quickly. But my advice to you, please never quit a job, except you have a better job. Even if you don't like your job, keep, uh, you know, stay at the, doing this job, try to learn as, as much as possible until you get a better job, then quit the bad one but don't quit a job to stay home. This is not a good idea. Okay, so in 2004, one of my professors in mining engineering, Dr. Yasser Shaib, you, know, uh, you know, his picture at the top, he introduced me to Dr. Ahmad Abu Sayyid, and he was a very famous guy in oil and gas in the United States. So, uh, and they asked me to join their company in Egypt. Its name is Informatics and uh, the, uh, the mother company called Advantech. They do, um, uh, besides uh, programming for oil and gas uh, softwares, they mainly they do geomechanics. And geomechanics, one of my majors inside mining engineering. So I get the feeling this is the right start. Now I'm modifying my dream. I was dreaming to become computer engineer. And now I'm moving to become a geomechanics engineer. No plans for that. For that. Just it was um, uh, by luck that my professor, Dr. Yasser Shave, he knows that I'm good in programming and he introduced me to uh, Dr. Ahmad Abu Sayyid and he started my job as a, um, a programmer. And 
I keep thinking, why don't I move to become a geomechanics engineer instead of being a programmer? Okay, and I found this is really a good idea. This is a new plan and I, I can make it a new dream. So this is the right time to switch from uh, working for IT to work for oil and gas. This was in 2004. Okay, now I'm working in a geomechanics company, but all my education was mining and I have very low grade in, in, in my undergrad. So I cannot even claim that I understood all topics uh, I get in, in mining engineering. So in 2006, I decided to go back to school to get uh, a natural gas engineering graduate diploma from Cairo University. And we used to do that during the weekend. So you can go and like you, you get these classes on Saturday, Saturday is off in Egypt, Friday and Saturday is off in Egypt. And I used to uh, study in parallel with my work again. So in 2006, I started my natural gas engineering graduate diploma, which is two years. And I get a very good grade in that. So they told me now it is accepted if you want to apply for a master degree in petroleum engineering in Cairo University in 2008. By law in, in Cairo University, I cannot apply for a master degree in petroleum engineering because my undergrad was not a petroleum engineer. So I took the natural gas engineering graduate diploma as a bridge to tell them, yes, I can do well in petroleum engineering. And uh, here is the evidence. I, I did my the two years uh, diploma of natural gas and I did well. In 2008, I started my master degree in petroleum engineering and I was keeping uh, working for Advantech and learn a lot about all uh, sides, all, all topics of geomechanics. Okay, so in 2009, early in 2009, Advantech sent me to work for uh, maybe uh, five months uh, for the uh, branch in Houston. So um, the mother company exists in, in Houston already and they have a branch in Egypt. So I went for a five months or four and a half uh, months for a training in the United States. And I used to meet, uh, to go to, uh, you know, uh, if any available conference or, or any available uh, technical meeting to talk to experts, try to enlarge my network. And this is one of the uh, good advice to you that please start building your network of experts. You must have a LinkedIn account. Try to talk to uh, experts in the United States and in France and in um, Germany, in whatever country, try to um, uh, enlarge your network of, you know, people that may help you one day. So the best thing happened during uh, that training in Houston that I get the chance to meet with Dr. Hisham Nasruddin. Dr. Hisham Nasruddin at the time, he left uh, Aramco. He, he used to work for Aramco as a uh, chief scientist. And he joined Texas and m one of the most famous uh, universities in oil and gas all over the world as a professor, okay? And during that meeting, you know, I, I have the picture of Al, Al Galeria Mall at the bottom. This is a, a very famous mall in Houston because we got that meeting at Al Galeria Mall. Okay, so I was very shy because I was expecting Professor Hashem will ask me, what is your GPA in your undergrad? What is your major in undergrad? And uh, it was, you know, I, 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 for sure I will feel shy to answer these questions because I did not do, uh, you know, uh, I did a very bad job during my undergrad. So the good thing happened that he asked me only because he knows that I'm working for a company. So he started asking, what do you can do in petroleum research. What are you doing in your job? He you start asking about the projects I'm doing in, 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 in the company I'm working for. Also, he did not ask me any question about my GPA or 
that you are a mining engineer and I cannot accept you to do a PhD in, in petroleum engineering or a master's degree in petroleum engineering. So in the United States, it is a different story. People ask you about what you can do. I don't care about if you, you know, was lazy in your high school or lazy in your undergrad. If I see evidence that you will do a good job with me. If you will not do a good job, I will fire you immediately. There is no problem. Okay. So after this meeting, the big lesson I got is uh, to become very self-confident. I know that I get a, a very good experience in geomechanics with uh, working for Advantech. And yes, I can do a PhD. By the way, uh, one of my friends at that company, he's is still uh, one of my uh, good friends. He got his PhD from UT Austin, which is the, maybe the most famous university in oil and gas. And all the time, when I ask, I, when I tell them, when I tell him that I want to do a PhD, he keep making jokes on me and make fun of me. That hey, you know, a PhD is not something easy, and only smart people uh, who can do it. And it seems like you are not smart in your undergrad, so most likely you cannot do that. So after meeting with uh, Dr. Nasser Dean, I get the feeling yes, I can make that, no problem. Okay. I went back to Egypt, keep working for Advantech until end of 2010. And uh, if you, if you remember, it was an economic crisis started in the United States in 2008. And we had many projects inside Advantech, but these projects, you know, we, we failed to renew some of them because of the crisis. And in 2008, in 2010, I decided to leave because uh, the project I'm working on is already done and it seems like there is no chance to renew it. So there is nothing to do. So I should leave before they uh, ask me to leave. So late in, maybe uh, in December, 2010, I talked to Dr. Ahmad El Bambi, his picture is here. He was one of my advisors in my master's degree in Cairo University. Again, network. If you don't know good contacts in the industry, maybe you will not find anyone to help you. For sure, we need help at uh, some time. And uh, the most important thing, you know, uh, to do is to build a very good network. So Dr. Ahmed El Bambi uh, recommended me to go for a, a, a training company in Egypt called Oil and Gas Skills. Here is a problem. At the time, I was married and I had a, a baby at the time. So there is no way if I, if I stay home, I will not find money to spend. It's a big problem, okay? So Dr. El Bambi told me, hey, you can go and work for this company for some time until you find a good job and leave. There's no problem. The question is this company, the major job is just they are selling training courses. It is a training arm of the Ministry of Petroleum in Egypt. So, for someone, uh, let's say, planning to get a master's degree or a PhD in petroleum engineering, what he will do in a training company if he will not work as an instructor? And for sure, at that time, I cannot uh, work as an instructor because my experience was not enough to do that. Okay, so here is uh, back to how to solve your problems. I decided to invent a new, a new project, to create a new project. Here is the creativity. I talked to my manager. I, I told him that, hey, we can do a new training project inside Oil and Gas Skills, that company, this is its name, and we will call it World Class Training. I will go, I will go, uh, I will get uh, experts from the United States and I will ask them to come to Egypt to teach and we will make a lot of money out of that because this is uh, you know, uh, a company work for profit and, and this is a normal business, business. So we did that and we did a very good job and the world-class training at that time in Egypt was very well known inside the uh, petroleum sector. And uh, all of this because I, I was trying to do something new and something 
creative so I can uh, find myself uh, working for a training company and not a tech doing a technical stuff. In 2003, I get the chance to transfer from OGS to uh, a joint venture with a famous American company, Apache, the, the Egyptian company called Khalda. We, you know, the, we call the company Khalda Apache. And this was amazing chance to do a field work. So this is, this was the real petroleum school for me. I did a lot of projects with Advantech, but I did not go to any field, any oil and gas field, never ever. So when I worked for Khalda, I, I did my best to stay all the time in the field, do a lot of jobs, do a lot of things, uh, always have my notebook, always have my camera, uh, get pictures for things, try to learn, learn as much as possible, because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe this is my only chance to, uh, to learn uh, field work. Also, I used to talk to uh, the company man, the service company, the rig hands, trying to educate myself. And this is one of my advices to you. If you get internship, please try to talk to the company man, talk to the uh, service company, talk to rig hands, try to learn. For sure, you should have a, note a notebook with you, write notes, because for sure you will forget all of that later. So try to uh, all the time have a small notebook in your pocket, okay? So pen and notebook is very, very important when you work in the field. Also, if they allow you to have a camera, because I used to have uh, a camera with me. Some, in some locations, you, you don't allow that, and it, you know, but I like to get pictures. Okay, in 2014, because I built very good network, because I get very good experience with Advantech, because I get very good experience with Khalda Apache. Dr. Solomon, here in the picture, he uh, get me a position in Texas Tech University to become a teaching assistant and do my PhD. At the time, I already have a master degree in petroleum engineering. I already have a natural gas, you know, grad diploma. I already have a mining uh, bachelor, okay? So Dr. Solomon, here in the picture, he get me the position to be a teaching assistant in, at Texas Tech University. And it was very easy to, um, uh, to work as a teaching assistant because he told him, hey, he, this guy working for 11 years for petroleum companies and he know a lot about the industry and for sure he will do a good job. The most important part that it was very easy to me to write a proposal for my PhD. This is a big problem, by the way, for PhD students. Most of the students, they go to the professors and say, hey, I wanna work for you. Please tell me an idea to do my PhD on. In my case, I work for many companies. I know many problems, industrial uh, problems. So I can write many proposals. And if my professor will like these proposals, for sure he will say, okay, yes, you can continue doing your uh, PhD in that. So I did uh, a second master degree in petroleum engineering at Texas Tech University, very easy piece of cake. Also, I did a PhD in petroleum engineering and I finished both in three years. This is like a record. Okay, so I was planning to get a job after finishing the third year, but this job, we did not reach a deal with, uh, with that university I was talking to. So I asked my uh, advisor, Dr. Lloyd Heinze, here in the, you know, um, uh, the guy who was shaking hand with me, uh, Dr. Lloyd Heinze. He, uh, he gave me extra semester until I find uh, a better job. So I finished the second master degree and PhD in three years and one uh, semester. So like uh, uh, three years and one third. Okay, and this is very, very short time for a PhD. Okay, 
So in 2017, the petroleum industry was really suffering. The oil price is very low. They are laying off engineers in the United States, no hiring. I'm not a, I'm not American citizen at that time. I'm, I don't have a green card at that time. So uh, whenever I go for a, to, um, uh, to ask for a job, they put me at the bottom of the list. No one want to hire me. Although I can, uh, you know, uh, you know, I can claim that I was more knowledgeable than uh, most of the other candidates, but I don't have, um, you know, my, I don't have a working visa. I don't have, um, you know, uh, I'm not a citizen. So I, I'm, I was facing some uh, problem. Also, it was a, a bad time for, um, uh, to ask for a job. So I tried to do field work again, but I was overqualified. You know what? When I go to uh, a job fair and I talk to employer, I tell him, hey, I, I have like, um, let's say, 15 publications in hydraulic fracturing. I have uh, two patents in hydraulic fracturing. I have a PhD. I have two masters. I have one postgrad diploma. I worked for 11 years for companies. Uh, I was expecting I will impress him. He looked to me and said, hey, just I need someone to go and get samples from, you know, uh, the fact fluid samples or do very little job. And I cannot, you are very overqualified. Your knowledge may be more than uh, your manager, you know, so I cannot hire you. So please, whenever you go and ask for a job, try to study well what is the requirement of this job. Because when you talk, you should talk about that you fit this job not overqualified, not underqualified. So before you go for interview, please read the, uh, the job description carefully and ask yourself why they should hire you. What is matching between your resume or your, you know, your experience and this job description? Because for sure your employer will think that way. Okay, so that problem because I graduated in a wrong time. 2017 was not a good time for oil and gas. So, because at that time I, uh, I have, uh, I, I had three kids, so I decided to to work for academia. I will try to find a job with a university, not for a company. A bad thing about working for a company in the United States that they, they will hire you if the oil price is good, and they will give you a very good salary. If the oil price is bad, they will, lay, they will lay you off. They will ask you to stay home. So if you work for a company, you should save a lot of money because you should be ready to stay home for one year at least at any time. You may go for your job this morning, uh, go for the lunch break. When you go back from the lunch break, you will find them put all your stuff in a box and they will not allow you to enter the company and they will say, hey, you already fired, you already laid off, take your box and leave. This happened a lot, very uh, tough situation. Okay, so here is one of the uh, funny stories that I, I get a job with Marietta College but they want me to start in August and I already graduated in, in December and I cannot stay home for more than three months Otherwise, they will um, uh, cancel my working permit. So Marita College want me after eight months. So what I should do? So I want to. I, I went to um, uh, Midland, Texas, and I I talked to a company called Selman. Selman is a, a good company doing uh, mud logging and well site geologist. And I believe some of you asking what is the relation between myself, my education, my experience, and mud logging. Nothing. Just I want a job. I, I don't want to stay home. If I stay home, this is not good for, I will not get enough money. I will not uh, get any experience. Please, whenever you get any job related to oil and gas, 
take it. If it is the only job, take it until you find something better. But don't stay home. This is not a good idea to stay home doing nothing. So I went to Selman. I told them I have a master's degree. Because for sure, they know that I'm Egyptian. And for sure, I did most likely I did not get my undergrad from the United States. So I, I told them I have a master's degree. And this is true. I have a master's degree from Texas Tech University. And I did not tell them that I have a PhD. If I told them that I have a PhD, for sure they will not hire me. Because again, they will say, hey, you are way overqualified. You are working for us for maybe a few weeks uh, and for sure you will leave because you will get a better job because you are a PhD, okay? So I get this job as a mud logger for maybe four or five months, maybe five, like uh, five months. And it was my last chance to do a field work. So I did my best to learn, learn, and learn. Get notes, get pictures, um, try to uh, memorize everything. You know, if you work as a mud logger, you go for a, to a drilling location. When I was working for Apache, for Helda Apache, I used to go for uh, hydraulic frack locations and acidizing locations, but no drilling locations. So here I'm seeing something new, okay? Then in August, 2018, I become uh, a Moretta College, uh, you know, uh, faculty member. So I was, I used to live in Texas, which in the, you know, in, in mid, mid uh, uh, south of United States. And now I'm working in Ohio, which is in, in, uh, in, e in Northeast of the United States. So the weather is different. A lot of things is different. You know, United States is too big country. So many of my uh, friends, he told me, why you, you, you go and work in Ohio? Why you work for Maretta College and not uh, targeting a university, let's say in Texas and in, in, you know, uh, Louisiana, something closer to uh, Gulf of Mexico, which is one of the major places of oil and gas and also closer to uh, the Permian Basin, which is one of the major places for oil and gas activity. So I asked myself this question, what I want from my employer. If I work for Marietta College or any other company or any other university, what I want. Also, if you work for a company, ask yourself this question. What do you want from this job? Do you want money? Yes, for sure. All of us, we need money. All of us, we like money. No problem. Do you want um, a stable job? Yes. Do you want a good work environment? Yes. Do you want appreciation from your managers? That when, whenever you do a good job, they appreciate your, uh, your, your job? Uh, yes. Do you want uh, a good reputation? You know, and you cannot do that without having a good assets. Again, work ethics is very important. If you are nice to people, understand the work ethics in your company, for sure everybody will like you. For sure you will, uh, the chance to do mistakes will be minimum. So, um, uh, you know, uh, again, everybody will, will, will like that, especially uh, your managers, okay? So I found all of that in Marietta College. Yes, it is not that big university. It is, you know, uh, like um, all our students, we have like 1,300 students in all over the college, which is very low number. At Texas Tech University, we were 35,000, like um, uh, 30 times uh, Marietta College. And, but I found this here is very good work environment, very good, very stable job, uh, very good appreciation. Uh, Money-wise, it is very similar to other universities, not a big difference. I mean, uh, maybe there is no difference at all. So why I should think uh, about leaving Marietta College? I decided to uh, think about new ideas to, uh, to make Marietta College better, to make myself better, and this is, uh, will be a win-win uh, situation, okay? Then I decided to get... Uh, a good idea, for sure, all of you know about it, which is pyro-petrol. By the way, here in the United States, the, every university, they call their students a name. 
So at Texas Tech University, there are students called Aggies. Aggies means from agriculture because uh, Texas A&M, when they started, they were only agriculture and uh, mechanical engineering. So this is why it is Texas A and M. A is agriculture, M is mechanical, okay? So they call their students Aggies. So in, in Texas Tech University, in Texas Tech University, they call their students, they are red readers. You know, the guy who ride a horse and go and attack with a gun, you know, the guns in, in Texas, this is a very, like um, a, a culture in, in, uh, in many states in the United States, like have the cowboy culture. So they call their students the, the red readers. And at Marietta College, we call our students the pioneers. So Pio, which is the first part of Pio Petro, this is the pioneers. Okay, so this is why we call it Pio uh, Petro. So Pio Petro simply is a platform to have, uh, you know, world-class uh, education free of a charge, and we make it available for all for, for all students worldwide. And this is why uh, you and Azerbaijan know about me because. Many students of you already get uh, some classes with, with PioPetro. And uh, this is the main object of PioPetro is to serve uh, petroleum engineering students and, you know, all petroleum uh, science related, uh, you know, uh, colleges. Like, in, you know, if you study geology or petrophysics or whatever, anything related to oil and gas, uh, for sure, uh, PioPetro will, will work to deliver uh, you know, uh, education services for you would charge for these students, uh, no matter your country. If you are in India or in Australia or in uh, Africa or in Azerbaijan, we, we don't care about the name of the country. We want to serve all of you the same way. Okay, so later, you know, sometimes we need to do a lot of things for, for, for biopetrol students to serve students. So we sometimes we ask uh, petroleum companies here in the United States to donate, let's say, uh, to get a, a better Zoom account, to get uh, some equipment, to get a, a nice camera to, re to video record something. So we used to ask companies to uh, donate for that. But later we found that we may offer some services for companies. So for sure, yes, we will keep all student services free of charge because this is the main objective of the, of the project. But when, uh, whenever we uh, deliver a service for a company and this company get money out of that service, why not they may pay PioPetro uh, a portion of that money, then PioPetro will take this money and spend it again to serve students. And this will be more uh, sustainable uh, project. So, uh, Whenever you see the blue uh, logo, this is all uh, student services, and this is for you, child. Whenever you see the red logo, this is for companies. This is PioPetro Professionals and PioPetro Consulting. Okay. Okay, so in the last summer, and because of COVID-19, uh, all most of internships worldwide get canceled, and we did amazing internship summer internship in, uh, in, you know, between PioPetro and the SPE Egypt section. And we get uh, maybe more than 8,000 applicants and more than 3,000 who continued the, 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 the classes. And we get um, students from more than 70 countries, from, uh, you know, um, uh, more than 200 universities, Eight universities you already recognize this training as a uh, you know uh, as a uh, replacement for the uh, training required for students to graduate, and for sure we get thousands of followers and you know on LinkedIn and Facebook and um, uh, YouTube. So it was amazing success. Later we decided to do training short courses every month. So. Here is uh, a picture of our, you know, Facebook page, the YouTube page, the LinkedIn page, and yes, we get uh, thousands of uh, followers and subscribers. 
um, some articles in, in uh, magazines and um, you know and journals and, and daily journals and you know and um, uh, SPE websites. M many of them they start talking about the Pyopeto Initiative, and um, uh, for sure you know this make you know uh, my team very happy and very proud of that. And now I will uh, try to answer a question. What do you need to study in the United States? So if you want to do a master or a PhD in the United States, first, you need to do a GRE exam. If you don't know what is GRE, go to Google and, and write GRE exam. OK, you should do GRE exam is most likely they will uh, test you in, in uh, understanding of basic mathematics and English. OK, it is a tough exam, but you can do it. You can you can do it and get a good grade. Also, you should do uh, TOEFL or IELTS. I'm saying all. So one of them is OK. TOEFL, this is a standard of United States. And IELTS, this is a standard of, of uh, England but it's still accepted in the United States, okay? And the TOEFL or IELTS, they, they measure your ability to communicate in English. If you will attend in a class, you will understand the teacher or not, you, you can talk to your colleagues or not. So you, they measure your, your ability to communicate in English. Also, they will ask about your GPA, your, your school and your undergrad. I, I see one of you saying, hey, but you mentioned that your GPA was too bad. So how you get a chance to study in the United States? Because I had a work experience. So the work experience may help you, may cover your some bad stuff, like a bad grade in your undergrad, but you get a very good work experience. So they will say, hey, let's give this guy a chance. Okay. Also, they will ask you to get uh, at least three recommendation letters, maybe from your professors, from anyone know you, and you must get amazing letters. Don't go to uh, someone who writes that you, are, you were good students. We need someone that says that you were super, one of the best students, because sometimes these recommendation letters will help you, okay? Also, they will ask you to write a letter of intent or write a letter why you are applying for this university. If you are applying for Texas Tech University, they will ask you to write a letter why you want to become a student here. Okay, and this is like a general uh, letter and uh, you can check Google and see examples and, you know, um, uh, for sure, whenever you write something, try to uh, check with a technical writer or someone who has more experience in writing because these things will uh, get you a better image when you one of the professors read your documents and want to uh, hire you as a teaching assistant or research assistant. If you see a lot of typo mistakes and uh, your writing not organized, it will get bad impressions that your ability to write a research paper. The most important thing in, in this list, in my opinion, is the networking. Let me tell you a secret. Do you know why I went to Texas Tech University? Most likely because I know Dr. Solomon very well and he know me very well and he knows that I can do a lot of job, a lot of work and he, know, he knows that I can do a, a good research. Imagine the situation if I don't know Dr. Solomon and he don't know me, he don't know my work, maybe I will not find any chance to go to the United States. Remember when I told you that I talked to Dr. Hisham Nasruddin, the professor at a &M. He passed away, by the way, like uh, six months ago. So uh, if I met him, when I met him, uh, let's say, uh, if I did not meet him, maybe I will not find any chance to go to a and and study uh, there. For sure, yes, I did not go for a different reason, for um, a, a personal reasons, and later I, I joined Texas a and But yes, networking is the most important uh, 
part in this list. If you have a very good uh, contacts, they can advise you about the requirement and they can hire you as a teaching assistant or a research assistant. What is my advice to you? Try to have all of this list. Get a good grade in the GRE exam. Get a good grade in TOEFL exam. Get a good GPA. Write a good letter of intent. Get a very good uh, recommendation letters. Contact uh, many professors in many universities in the United States and ask for uh, you know, a chance to do a master's degree or a PhD, okay? If you get the chance to work for a company, this would be great. If not, not a big problem. If you are planning to get a master uh, or PhD, if you already have the top part of this list, okay? You're done with your master's degree or, uh, or PhD or um, even a bachelor from the United States, and now you wanna work in the United States. So they will give you something called OPT, and this is like a temporary work permit, and they will uh, get you the chance to work from one to up to three years. So the OPT will, be, will give you a work permit to work for one year, and you can, as an engineer, you can renew that for two more years. So the total will be three years, okay? During these three years, you should apply for uh, H-1B visa, which is a working visa. If you work for a university, this process should be very easy because they, they will give a, a priority for, uh, you know, inst you know, you know, university uh, professors. And for sure, if you get the chance to apply for a green card or, you know, um, become a citizen, this would be amazing. Okay. For sure, if you have any question about studying in the United States or working in the United States, I will be happy to answer any questions at the end. Okay. Now I will give you some general advices. Okay. Maybe many of you are very sad that um, uh, if you graduate now, you will not find a good job. They are not hiring in the Azerbaijan. In, they are not hiring in Azerbaijan now. They are not hiring in Egypt. They are not hiring in the United States. Maybe you will. You, you are sharing uh, the bad news about the oil and gas industry these days. But this is the good thing is oil price go ups and this the ups this ups and downs. This is like a periodic. It goes uh, very high price and everybody get a job. Then it will go down. Then it will go up again. So this will happen many, 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 many times. In late 90s, it was, uh, the oil price went very low. In, uh, in 2004, a problem happened and oil price went very low. In 2008, a problem, a, a problem happened. In 2000, at the end of 2014, a big problem happened. So this will, in, in 80s, in, I believe in 1986 or 87, a big problem happened in the oil and gas uh, you know, uh, industry because of the oil price went very low. So if this is a bad time for uh, uh, right now, it will be a different after one year. After one year, you will get a, all of you will get jobs. But please be ready. Don't stay home. Try to uh, volunteer for SPE volunteer for SEG, volunteer for uh, SPWLA, volunteer for uh, ARMA, the Rock Mechanic Association, volunteer for anything that they will teach you something about oil and gas, okay? Uh, volunteer for Biopetro, for sure. We will be happy to have you. So uh, uh, whenever you get a free overcharge training, I'm not recommending you to pay any money. If you, are, if you don't have a job, don't pay money for training you will find a lot of opportunities to get training free of charge, like what we have in Piopetro, for example. So uh, training as possible. Um, try to build and enlarge your uh, professional network. You must have a LinkedIn account. You must have um, uh, uh, a professional resume, write a very good CV, okay? Uh, also, please accept any work related to oil and gas, even uh, if you don't like it, because again, it, it will be better than stay home jobless, okay? Don't stay home doing nothing. Okay, 
The next advice is please remember when it comes to work and deadlines, there are no excuses accepted. I don't care if you if you, there's a deadline today, if I am your employer, I don't care if you will come today and say, hey, yesterday I was sick. Yesterday I had any kind of problem. My only, I, as a manager, I will focus on that the work did not deliver, has, the work has not delivered, and this is a big problem. Maybe we'll have a client who will not give us any projects anymore, maybe we'll lose a lot of money because of that. So uh, whenever, most likely, whenever you go to your manager, ask him for forgiveness because he did not uh, respect the deadline or you did not deliver on time, for sure uh, you will be uh, blacklisted. He will not be happy of that. And for sure, whenever there's a chance to um, lay off engineers, you will be at the top of this list. They will not keep you because um, you are not uh, very responsible, okay? So take care of that, okay? We are uh, result-oriented. I don't care about reasons. I care about the results, okay? Okay, uh, also I want all of you to remember the difference of being a normal uh, engineer or a normal uh, employee and super. Okay, you can do um, a normal job. You get a salary, you go every day to work for eight hours, but there is no creativity in your work. You don't have a problem solving uh, uh, techniques or experience. You don't have a critical thinking. You have the minimum knowledge. All of these things, this is a bad thing. This is like the minimum requirement to do a job. And for sure, you will not do it perfect. So the kind of engineers we like to keep in the company is the super ones, the creative ones, the, the ones who has uh, very good knowledge and all the time they uh, increase their knowledge, enhance their knowledge, um, you know, go for training, uh, discuss, go to technical discussions, to go to a technical meeting to learn more. They have a critical thinking, you know, uh, personality. So whenever the company decide to lay off engineer, they will keep this ones. They will keep the good ones, and they will lay, they will lay off the bad ones, like the one who did not deliver, uh, you know, uh, tasks on time. Also remember, if I am your employer. I will not hire you. If I, if I am doing an interview for you right now, I will not hire you if, if you have a bad attitude or a troublemaker. You must have a good attitude to keep your job. If you have a bad attitude, for sure, after a short period of, time, of working time, you will be a blacklisted and, and, and for sure, whenever there's a chance, they will fire you, okay? Please don't be a troublemaker in your company, okay? Please don't share any negative energy inside the company. There are some people, all the job is talking about salaries that I'm not happy because my salary is, is low, is lower than um, uh, that guy's salary and he keep all the time comparing himself or herself with others and uh, talking negatively about the company, talking negatively about his, the, his managers. This is, we call it, this is sharing negative energy inside the company. This is like a, you have a virus and you keep uh, spreading this virus. Someone has COVID-19 and instead of staying home, he went to his job and tried to sneeze in the face of everyone uh, he meets. So this is, uh, for sure, this negative energy will collapse a company at some at some point. So, uh, if your managers notice that you are you have this kind of negative energy, for sure you will be blacklisted, and for sure they will fire you whenever there is a chance. The opposite is true. Try to have a positive energy. Try to um, look positively. 
to things. Try to uh, find solutions instead of um, uh, critique things or criticize uh, things. Try to find solutions. Yes, I can see, all of us can see problems, but I can go to my manager and say, hey, there is a problem and I got you a solution. We can do this and this and this. And instead of all the time, I, I say, hey, there is a problem, there is a problem, there is a problem. Yes, we know there is a problem, but you know, uh, try to think about how to solve it instead of repeating that there is a problem, okay? Also, if you are not a team player, if you are not helpful and supportive, to your colleagues inside the company. For sure, I will not like you as an employer. Do you know why? I don't care if you are a good player, if you, um, uh, I believe in Azerbaijan, they like soccer, right? In Egypt, we like soccer very much. In the United States, they, they don't like soccer. But, oh, you know, you know, you know girls, they like uh, soccer more than, uh, you know, boys. But I don't care if you are a, a very good player, soccer player, but the, the team is losing team. What is the value? If you are a very good player, but the whole team losing the game every time. This is like if you, if, you, if, you, if you know that you are a good engineer, but you don't want to help your colleagues, you are not uh, want to teach them, teach them anything, you don't want to give them any support, the whole team will do very bad, so I don't care if you are doing a good job or not, because the whole team is losing. Okay, so please try to be helpful, try to be supportive inside your company. If you do this, all your colleagues will like you. Okay. And uh, uh, finally, I have uh, like a, a list of things that I want you to remember. Please keep a good attitude in the company. If you, whenever you get a job. Uh, remember that oil price or oil crisis. This this will happen a lot, and this this crisis is not the it is not the first one, and it is not the last one. So, uh, if you get a good job, try to have a good saving. Save as much as money as as possible of your money, because maybe when the oil price go down again, maybe they will ask you to stay home for six months or one year or whatever. And you need to have uh, enough money, okay? This apply a lot in the United States market. In the United States, yes, easily you can get a job and easily you can uh, lay it off. So whenever you get a, a good job, try to have a very good saving in your bank account because maybe at any day they will say, hey, um, we are facing a bad situation, a bad economic situation inside the company and you need to lay off uh, some engineers and you, you are not, working with us anymore. Please don't stop uh, to develop your skills. So training, uh, whenever there's a chance to get training, do it. And uh, remember this, stop learning new things only when you die. Even if you are 70 years old, if you are 80 years old, if you are 90 years old, try to learn new stuff. Otherwise, you will be old fashioned. You know what? If I stop uh, if I stop learning new stuff, if I go and teach my students, they would say, hey, this is like old fashioned stuff. This professor is not updated. There's a lot of new technologies and he know nothing about them. Okay, so try to be updated all the time. Okay. Remember, uh, networking is very important. Most of the jobs we get, we get, we get it because we have a good network. Well, a good contact gave you a good advice. A good contact told you, hey, this company is hiring. Go and send your resume. Okay. Um, also, all the time, try to produce good ideas. Try to be creative. Biopetro is just a good idea. Okay. Uh, World class training, when I did that for, for, uh, for the training company in Egypt, it was a good idea. Okay. And I believe all of you can get uh, better ideas, okay? Just keep your mind working, keep it healthy. All the time, think about good ideas, okay? A good idea means this idea has a very good impact. If the idea has no impact in the industry or in the company or in whatever, in the market, 
it means it is not a good idea. A good idea means it must have a good impact, okay? Okay, um, ask yourself, if you are applying for a job, ask yourself why they should hire you. Let's say Halliburton or Schlumberger or BP or Chevron, they are hiring these days and you are applying for a job. You should ask yourself, what is special uh, in your resume? What is special in your experience that they will let them uh, hire you immediately? If you find nothing, it means you need to improve your, uh, you get better training, learn new stuff, um, uh, write a better resume to show uh, your uh, strengths points, okay? But uh, again, uh, put yourself in the, in the uh, employer situation and ask yourself, okay, what is special about me to get this job? Okay, what is uh, uh, creative, what is innovative way uh, to do this job and I will tell them that in my interviews that I can do this and this and this and this, and this will benefit the company a lot. Whenever they see a value, they will be happy to hire you, okay? Um, sit only with people who gives you positive energy. Sit only with people who gives you positive energy. If you have a friend and all the time talk about bad things, negative things, that he uh, he believes that future will be very bad, and you know, um, and, and give you uh, such kind of a negative energy, please don't sit with them. You know what? Even in my home, I stopped listening to if there is a song or a music. And that music is uh, give you negative feeling or, or make you feel sad. Uh, I don't like to listen to this stuff. I listen only to music or songs that give me uh, positive energy. Why? Because I want to achieve my, my task of the day. I want to go to my office feeling happy, not feeling very sad. Okay? If you are happy, for sure you will do a better job. Also, we, we, um, we forgot one, one point. If you need help, start by helping others. Trust me, this one works very well. If you, if you need a job and you get the chance to help anyone to find a job, please do it. Maybe someone will give you uh, an ad for a job. Let's say Schlumberger, or um, let's say Halliburton needs uh, a drilling engineer. And I'm not a drilling engineer. I'm a fracking engineer. So I, I, I read the, the job description and I know this job will not fit me because I'm not a drilling engineer. But in my mind, I know that I have 10 friends. All of them are uh, drilling engineers. I will talk to all of them. Hey, listen, there is a job posted in Halliburton. They need a drilling engineer. Please go and apply. Because if you if you help them, maybe one of them later, when he gets a job, he can help you. Maybe you will get an help from a different place. Not this guy will help you, but maybe because you help it, uh, uh, you know, one of your colleague, one of your friends. Maybe someone, even you don't know, will help you. I remember a very funny story. Let me share it with you. When I was in, uh, in, at, um, living in Lubbock, Texas, I was living in a city called Lubbock. It, it is in, uh, in West Texas. Okay. So, and I had a problem that I need to find a job immediately because I will start my work with, for Marietta College after eight months and I cannot stay home for more than three months. Otherwise, my, my uh, working permit will get canceled. And in my Facebook, I find someone I have never known him before and I did not meet him. He wrote me a message that he, he is Egyptian and working for Halliburton 
in Midland, Texas, which is very close to me. And he, told, he wrote me that uh, he is coming to Lubbock and he want to meet with uh, any Egyptian lives in Lubbock. And just he get my, you know, my, my, uh, my email in a, in, a, in a random way. I don't know what, from where he got my uh, account. So I gave him a phone call because he left me my, his cell phone number. And I said, hey, uh, if you need any help, I, 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 I should do that. But, you know, I, I don't like to drive my car at night because I don't have a good vision at night. I don't like to drive at night. Uh, and let's meet tomorrow morning. He said, tomorrow morning, I will be leaving, going back to my work. So we used to talk over the phone maybe every week, every 10 days. And one time he gave me a phone call and he told me, hey, uh, Ahmed, you told me that you need a job. If you go to a company called the Selman in Midland, and, and please don't tell them that you are a PhD, tell them that you are a master, only a master degree, and tell them this and this and this and this, and they will give you a job immediately. You know what? I did exactly what he told me, and I get the job, and I solved my problem. Until today, I did not meet that guy in real. Yes, well, I talk to him over the phone sometimes, but we never meet. Maybe that guy uh, contacted me and helped me to, to find that job for five months and get a, a nice salary for five months, just because maybe I helped, I helped many other students or many other friends before. And, you know, uh, uh, the God sent me that guy to help me. So please uh, believe in that. If you need help, try to help others. And for sure, someone will help you, okay? Uh, also, I wanna uh, advise you to plan for future, but don't make your future plans uh, very rigid. Try to modify your plans whenever you get new inputs. Try to modify and update your plans. Do you remember when I told you that I, I was dreaming to be a computer science, computer engineer? I get a, the chance to be a petroleum engineer, and now I'm very happy with my job, very satisfied. So if I keep uh, my plan rigid and I don't want to change it, maybe I, I will not be uh, any, uh, I will not do any successful uh, job in my future. Okay? So um, work and learn and never compare yourself with others. Whenever you have a job, Please don't compare yourself with others. Don't compare your salary with other salary. Don't compare your the how they treat you with others because these things. This is um, you will not feel happy. You will not feel satisfied, and maybe this bad feeling will be your first step to lose your job. If I, if you go to your job in the morning and you look very upset, very unhappy, they will notice that. You will not do a good job. You will not do your tasks uh, in a perfect way. So um, try to um, uh, don't compare yourself with others. And if you get a better job in a different company, why not? You know, study the case, think about it twice. If it is a better job, you, you can quit and leave, no problem. Okay, this is all what I have for you today. And I will be happy to answer any questions to related to anything of my presentation. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Dr. Ahmad. We have uh, 13 questions in the question and answer section. So I will start uh, from the beginning. Um, the first person asks that uh, he wants to do the master's degree in petroleum engineering as a geoscience graduate and um, he wants your opinion uh, about this turn, turn, downturn how would be this decision would it be good to do the master's degree in petroleum engineering this year okay during the downturn if there is no jobs in the companies maybe this is the best time to think about uh, doing a master degree or a PhD. The universities is still hiring in, in the United States for, uh, you know, for PhD students and master's students. 
and uh, uh, for sure, yes, the the amount of the the number of uh, you know chances is less because you know we um, how we hire the student, how we get them. Uh, so there's some students came to do a master or PhD and they pay money for that. Okay, some other students because they are very smart and they have very good GPA, very good achievement during their undergrad. So sometimes they get a chance to get a, a scholarship. So they came to United States free of charge. They, uh, they get a salary, they get, uh, they, paid, they get their tuition paid. So they almost um, you know, um, get everything free of charge plus they get a, a salary. But if you go to University of Houston, for example, as a master's degree student or a PhD student, they will um, they will hire you to 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 join a research team, um, uh, get the the money from a company. Let's say Shell or Chevron, for example. They have a research project, so they went to Texas A&M or University of Houston, and they asked them, "Hey, we will give you one million dollar over three years to solve this problem." And a professor at the University of Houston will say, hey, okay, I, will, I need to hire two PhD students and one master's degree student. Okay, now he has a position, he has a, a, a money for three grad students. Then he, he can hire you. So if the, if the companies are not uh, doing a good job because of the downturn, the oil price is not uh, very good, for sure the money will go to universities will be less, but they are still hiring. Just they, they still have uh, uh, chances for you know master and PhD. So my advice to you is contact, uh, get a list of all universities who teach oil and gas. University of Houston, University of Texas and M, uh, UT Austin, uh, Louisiana University, Texas Tech University, um, you know Colorado School of Mines. Um, uh, Wyoming University, um, there, is a, there is many, maybe more than 30 different universities teach oil and gas in the United States. And go and check the faculty members. If your major is drilling, if your major is geology, if your major is um, you know, production, try to find who, who the professors working in your area. And before contacting him, asking for a scholarship, try to study his resume. If you want to talk to me, you need to read my resume first. Why? Because you will argue with me that you are the best fit ever to work with me. So how you will know that if you don't know that what is my speciality? Okay, so get a list. Study the, the faculty members list. If you select some of them to contact, try to um, uh, study the resume before you contact them, just to write them a perfect email. Thank you very much for your detailed information. So the next question is that, uh, do abroad companies hire freshers, the first year students? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, by, by the way, um, we lay off uh, engineers with very long experience because they get very big salaries. So may someone work for a, a company in Houston and he get paid $200,000 a year. If I lay him off, I can hire uh, maybe three fresh grad uh, engineers. So yes, yes, we hire a lot. We hire a lot of fresh uh, graduates, and there's no problem, especially uh, to do a field work. And please, if you get a, the chance to uh, to do a, to work in the field, please do it at least two years uh, at the beginning of your uh, career. Thank you very much. So the next question is that um, which college requires the least tuition fee in the USA for a low income uh, person uh, for a master's degree? Since the many uh, universities are very costly. Okay, in my opinion, I, I, when I was in Egypt thinking 
the same way like you think right now. I decided that I will not pay any money to any university in the United States. I will work to make myself has a very good experience, attract, my experience is attractive, my, res, my research skills is, uh, uh, are attractive, and I will ask only for a scholarship. So if you, if you are from a middle class family, your family not very rich and it is not easy to send you to the United States and, and pay for your uh, university tuition. No, I'm not advising you to do that. Just ask only for a scholarship, free of a charge uh, master degree or free of a charge uh, PhD, and they will not give it to you uh, except uh, you are different, you are unique, you have a special skills. Thank you very much. So the next question uh, is that um, Shukri Elias is a third year petroleum engineering student. Uh, he is 20 years old and he wants uh, to start working with an oil company uh, this year. Is it recommended or not? He wants to ask. So he, he did not finish his, his, his undergrad yet, right? Yes. Okay, look, the main issue is uh, if, you, if you work for that company, uh, during the summer, and this will not make any problem to your education, uh, go ahead and do it. For sure, you will benefit a lot. But if you will do uh, like me when I was in my undergrad and I left you know, the school and went to work, for sure, you will not get a good GPA and maybe you will suffer later. So you will be happy that you are learning uh, you know, new stuff in oil and gas. You are happy that you are getting... Uh, some kind of salary, but uh, your GPA will be very low. And maybe in the future, you would like to get a better job or you want to do a master or PhD and they will not uh, give you that chance because your GPA is low. So um, think about it twice. Uh, go and work for the company if it will not affect your education and getting a good grade in, in, in your uh, undergrad education. Thank you very much. So the other question is about volunteering. Uh, Ankit Raj is asking that how to volunteer for Pio Petro or SP or for any organization, like the tips, hints, maybe. Okay. So if you want to volunteer for Pio Petro, for example, just you can contact me directly through email or messenger or whatever uh, contact. My, by the way, my contact is, uh, you know, uh, uh, easy to get, just write my name and, uh, and Moretta College, you will find my cell phone number, you will find my email. So um, try to contact me directly. Um, uh, also, if you want to volunteer for the SPE or SEG or SPWLA, at any country, you will, you will find a, uh, a chapter, something like a student chapters inside universities, or you will find a section for the country. So you'll see SPE, uh, Azerbaijani section, SPE Egypt section, uh, SPE North America section, for example. So uh, just you contact them, you get the who's the you know in, in that section, and you you contact them. Also, if you contact the um, uh, the SPE president inside any university, they may get you uh, a bit of advice. And uh, that is the same story with SPE, SPWLA, SEG. It's the same thing. Thank you very much again. So the next question is about how do you see the future of oil and gas production after this pandemic situation? Okay, so um, you, you know it is, it is not wise when you ask someone questions that, hey, uh, what is your prediction for the oil price after 10 years? If someone told you that he knows that, uh, for sure he is a liar. But what I can tell you is for the next 50 years or maybe for the next more than 50 years, we still has no replacement for petrochemicals. And we get all these petrochemicals. You know, all, all what we have surrounding us is petrochemicals. Maybe my clothes right now is petrochemicals. Maybe the flag behind me is petrochemicals. Maybe my desk a lot of, uh, you know, pieces in my computer or my mug or whatever are petrochemicals. 
So even if they are focusing these days about renewable energy or solar energy, wind energy, or, you know, geothermal, this kind of uh, new stuff, we still has no replacement for petrochemicals. And there is no way to get these petrochemicals without uh, doing the conventional oil and gas activity. Okay, so um, for sure, after the, the pandemic, most likely will disappear by end of uh, 2021. And uh, China, United States, uh, Russia, Europe, they will come back to race to recover uh, economically from that pandemic. So um, uh, we are expecting to, to see uh, a very high uh, you know, uh, needs for oil and gas. There, a lot of companies will be hiring. So I believe the situation will change a lot um, you know, after one year maximum from now. Thank you very much. So the next question is uh, from Mohammed. He is asking that uh, right now the companies are not recruiting the fresh engineers. Uh, Mohammed is un unemployed um, and he has finished his bachelor's degree this year. And he wants to ask uh, whether he should change his uh, major to the renewable energy or uh, he should keep trying um, and going for masters in petroleum engineering. Okay, this is a very good question. You know, you know, um, uh... When, whenever you have an idea, you need to study this idea, you know, um, carefully. Maybe it is a good idea, maybe it is a bad idea. So you need to collect, keep collecting information about it. So a lot of my colleagues, these, the, um, beside studying oil and gas, they went to study the uh, data analysis. Okay, because the data analysis or data analytics, you, you can do the job and at any major, maybe you get hired by um, uh, a medicine company. Maybe you get hired by, um, you know, um, uh, uh, surveying company. Maybe you get hired by any other companies and not only oil and gas. So having something beside oil and gas, yes, maybe this is a good idea, but my recommendation is uh, maybe if you go for a master degree, if it is not expensive in your country, I'm not sure if you are from Azerbaijan or from any other uh, country, but if you continue doing uh, a master degree in oil and gas, maybe this will, uh, will be a good choice. And at the same time, uh, study carefully uh, the other thing, because I'm not sure in your country if there is a, a jobs for uh, solar energy or not. Maybe you go and study solar energy or wind energy, and again, you will not find a job. So um, um, this is not an easy question to answer. If you want to study something beside oil and gas, study data analysis. This is will be, will wide make make your chances bigger. Maybe this is a, a, a good advice. And at the same time, if you uh, do a master in, in petroleum, yes, this is a good idea. And I forgot to mention something. If you came to United States with a master degree in petroleum, it is very easy to get a PhD uh, free of a charge. This will be way better than uh, came to United States and say, hey, I have only a bachelor degree, but I don't have a master or a PhD. So if you do a master degree in, in, in your country, then uh, your, your, um, uh, the chance to get a PhD scholarship in the United States would be very easy. So thank you very much for your detailed information. So uh, the one more question is that, um, is it suggestible, is it um, good to changing, transferring from mud logging to mud engineering? Okay, um, you, you know, um, uh, there is no problem at all to, to switch from these two things. And uh, the funny thing that I, I um, uh, when I finished my PhD, and I am engineer, so I, I was trying to get to, to get a job as a, a, a mud engineer, but I, as he did not give me the job. And when I get a job as a mud logger, I met a mud engineer, and I, when I asked him uh, what is his uh, major, he told me that he was um, a, a geologist. 
So he was a geologist. So maybe a geologist is a is a is the right fit to work as a mud logger. So we are switching places. I should work as a mud engineer, and he should work as a mud. But we are switching places. So um, if you have a uh, if you are smart, if you uh, if you want to learn, you can do any job. If you you can do um, uh, mud logging, mud engineering can be frac engineering. Here in the United States, you will get uh, uh, maybe you will get shocked when you see a very famous name very famous guy working for a very for a very famous company and you ask him what is your major and he will tell you um, i studied agriculture can you imagine that someone was a agriculture major and he he went to he's doing amazing job in uh, hydraulic fracturing for halliburton i'm talking about a very famous name i don't like to uh, mention uh, his name but he's really a very famous guy working for halliburton in uh, hydraulic fracturing, and um, uh, his major was uh, agriculture, not even geology or whatever. So yes, you can do anything. Thank you very much. So I think one last question. Uh, what would you suggest to do the master's degree just right after the bachelor's degree and then beginning to work in the petroleum engineering or first to gain the, some experience before after the bachelor's and then having a master? Okay, um, uh, this is a very good question. Again, um, if it is your choice, if, if you have a job, start with a job. The question is, if there is no job, okay, go for a master's degree because there is no job. But if, 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 if you already have a job in oil and gas, uh, at least do um, two to three years working and this will make your life way easier uh, if you decide to do a master degree. Uh, if you live in the United States, I will tell you, hey, keep your job, keep working until you get laid off because oil price is low, then go and do a master degree. But um, if you are growing in your uh, career, if you get your job and you are growing in, in this job and you, you get a good salary, everything fine, uh, try to do a master during weekend or something online and try to keep your job, uh, you know, uh, as possible. But if there is no job uh, and you tell me, hey, um, I should wait and apply for jobs or I, I do um, uh, a master. No, just go for, uh, do a master. Thank you very much. So uh, one more question. Um, what are the job opportunities for chemical engineers in the oil and gas field? There is a lot of, but let me tell you, if I ask you this question, um, uh, what is the most uh, engineering major work for oil and gas? Maybe most of you will say, hey, petroleum engineers. No, the most, the most engineering uh, speciality we have in the oil and gas are mechanic, is mechanical engineers. You know that? So um, uh, mechanical engineering has a, a very big, maybe the largest opportunity to work in the oil and gas. And also chemical engineering has a very good opportunity. Chemical engineering, they can work in, in, uh, in, in petrochemicals, uh, plants. They can work in, uh, in uh, natural gas treatment. They can work in, um, uh, in oil uh, refineries. They can work in, in um, uh, even in, uh, they can work as a mud engineer as, as a mud engineers inside companies because they can work in uh, hydraulic fracturing, high in, in uh, acidizing because there is a there is a lot of chemicals and whenever we receive these chemicals we need to test it. So chemical engineering has a lot of things inside our industry inside oil and gas industry. So um, it is not one job. It is many 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 jobs for chemical engineers in, inside the uh, oil and gas industry. So thank you very much. And uh, we have one more question in the chat. Nassima is asking, um, he is um, or she is just graduated and currently unemployed uh, and staying home. Uh, and he, um, he started, started doing online learning. Uh, he would like some advice whether 
like, can you give some advice what to do now? Because, you know, the current situation, the companies are not hiring and uh, he's unemployed right now. Okay, so if I am in your place, I will keep thinking, okay, I need to develop myself because I, if there's a, a job uh, in the future, they will take it uh, the one who is ready. So I can say I stayed home for one or two years doing nothing, but another guy will say, hey, I, st- I spent two, two years in, in, in my home, but I did uh, 20 training courses, uh, two internships or whatever. So I, he can just try to have something to write in your CV. When you apply for a job, they will ask you, okay, hey, you graduated uh, two years ago or three years ago. So what you are doing uh, in the last three years? Nothing. This is not a good answer. This is not a good uh, ma- management for your uh, uh, time. So uh, my advice is you can get continuous training with us in PyoPetro, for example, or any some anything similar to PyoPetro. So keep, we, we will have like three internships every year. We have a, uh, an internship in, during spring. We have internship during summer. We have internship during uh, the fall. Also every month we have a training courses. All of them free of charge. So keep doing this stuff. Uh, also, uh, think about uh, doing a master degree in your in your uh, university in your country. Maybe this is a good idea if if you like that. This is for sure better than um, uh, staying home doing nothing. And uh, I I promise you, whenever there is a job, uh, you will be way way better than all others. So just um, um, be ready for something you don't know now. But yes, after one year, after six months, maybe tomorrow, uh, you will find a very good opportunity. And the one who will take it is the only one who is ready for the job and try to be ready. So thank you very much for the lecture, for this amazing session. Um, we have a lot of appreciations from the audience as well. Um, so just one last point, the recording and the presentation will be sent to all of the participants. So thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, for today. Sure, thank uh, you very much. I'm, you. I'm, I'm very happy to be with you today. And uh, I, I wish it will not be uh, the last time to uh, talk about general things. You know. <laughs> so thank you very much and have a wonderful uh, rest of the day.